Bernie Sanders, you know, while Joe Biden is out doing fundraisers with Comcast, apparently he's going to be doing a fun fundraiser with Goldman Sachs. I, I, I kid you not. Uh, he's been doing fundraisers in uh, with greedy, greedy cor- corporate CEOs. Uh, he's been doing fundraisers with pharmaceutical executives. I mean, you can't make this up. Joe Biden does not care. He's not even trying to pretend. While Joe Biden is out doing that, he's fundraising more than campaigning. Sound like Hillary Clinton 2016? Uh, Bernie Sanders is out with the people. He's out with the people. Uh, And Bernie Sanders was at uh, Walmart's shareholders meeting today, uh, basically fighting and standing up for Walmart's workers. So here's some of Bernie at the shareholders meeting. Resolution, and it states, and I quote, resolved shareholders of Walmart urge the board to adopt the policy of promoting significant representation of employee perspectives among corporate decision makers by requiring that the initial list of candidates from which new nominees are chosen by the nominating and governance committee include hourly associates. The policy should provide that any third party consultant asked to furnish an initial list will be requested to include such candidates, end of quote, end of resolution. Madam Chair, the issue that we are dealing with today is pretty simple. Walmart is the largest private employer in America and is owned by the Walton family, the wealthiest family in the United States, worth approximately $175 billion. And yet, despite the incredible wealth of its owner, Walmart pays many of its employees starvation wages. Wages that are so low that many of these employees are forced to rely on government programs like food stamps, Medicaid, and public housing in order to survive. Frankly, the American people are sick and tired of subsidizing the greed of some of the largest and most profitable corporations in this country. They are also outraged by the grotesque level of income and wealth inequality in America, as demonstrated by the CEO of Walmart making a thousand times more than the average Walmart employee. Last year, Walmart made nearly $10 billion in profit. It paid its CEO over $20 million in compensation, and it has authorized $20 billion in stock buybacks, which will benefit its wealthiest stockholders. Surely, with all of that, Walmart can afford to pay its employees a living wage of at least $15 an hour. Let's just get the numbers out here. Shall we? Let's just get the numbers out here. Walmart made $10 billion in profits last year. $10 billion. $10 billion. They made $10 billion largely off the backs of people like this. Working at Walmart has been mentally and physically draining due to the fact that we're understaffed, underpaid, I'm constantly having to worry about whether or not my hours are going to get cut and because we have inconsiderate management and policies that don't have the associate's best interest in mind. That's why I'm so excited to hear about Senator Sanders speaking on our behalf as shareholders. It excites me to know that someone like Senator Sanders is willing to speak on our behalf concerning having Walmart associates on the board. That's just that's just one person who works at Walmart. Bernie gave up his uh, Twitter. Bernie gave up his Twitter account. And he had a whole flowing list of Walmart's uh, abused and uh, underpaid workers. But a company that's making $10 billion in profit and paying most of its workers at the high end $11 an hour, what you call that is theft. That $10 billion in profit is coming from those workers, not the Walmart CEO or its shareholders. So when you're gorging and gorging and gorging and gorging $10 billion in profits, you're stealing from the actual producers of that labor. And I think this Bernie Sanders tweet put it well. In 2017, four of the Waltons made $12.7 billion in one day. $12.7 $12.7 billion in one day. To make as much as the Waltons did in that one day, it would take a Walmart worker working full-time at $11 an hour 
more than 257,000 years. This is why we demand an end to their greed. Can you imagine that for a second? I mean, I take on Jeff Bezos, who was making, um, I think, $266 million an hour. No, excuse me, a day. The Waltons, $12.7 billion in one day. This is nothing short. Let's not even bother calling it capitalism. It is capitalism. It's called theft. It's called stealing. You are stomping on mostly poor. I don't know the exact demographics, but a hell of a lot of minority workers at Walmart to buy yourself multiple, you know, homes in the multiples of 10. I'm sure that the Waltons have 20, 30 homes. Your yachts, the best of the best, stomping on your workers. I don't understand. I mean, I do understand why Bernie Sanders is pretty much the only one who's been fighting against this for many, many years. I mean, you have people coming like Johnny Come Lately's now. You know, you got Julian Castro out fighting for 15. Uh, G Governor Jay Inslee out there fighting for 15. But Bernie Sanders has been the only one consistent. And this is not a. Uh, it's, it's not a progressive issue or a conservative issue. It's a human rights issue because these people at Walmart are at the mercy. Uh, I, I watched a video. They're at the mercy of their abusive managers. So if so, it's ha even hard to keep a second job because most of these people need to work two to three jobs because their hours are always changing at Walmart. And the Walmart at the shareholders meeting today in response to Bernie Sanders. This, this is what Walmart has to say. We welcome Bernie Sanders on his campaign stop to Northwest Arkansas. Here are a few facts I'm fairly certain he won't acknowledge while describing his outdated view of Walmart. No other company in the U.S. is making debt-free college education accessible to more than a million people for about a dollar a day. Oh, that buzzword, debt-free college, which really isn't debt-free. But anyway, Hillary Clinton used this. It doesn't mean anything. It's not debt-free. But anyway, no other company has opened 200 training academies providing enhanced workforce skill building for hundreds of thousands just this past year. Advanced workplace skills for what? To go work at Walmart for $11? If you're lucky, not everybody at Walmart makes $11. No other company has hired more than 225,000 veterans in the last five years. No other company in America has pledged to avoid emissions in the supply chain by 1 billion metric tons by 2030. Oh, how kind of you. How kind of you. The, the men and women of America who are fighting our absurd wars for the price of, the, for the price of witnessing heinous, heinous wars for the price of their PTSD they get to come home and make $11 an hour at Walmart. Man, if I knew that, I would have joined the military a long time ago. Oh, so kind. And Walmart, you know, they're trying to do the, oh, we're patriots. We hire veterans to, to, to uh, work at starvation wages. I give, I give homeless people money whenever I can. Me personally, does that mean I'm doing something to alleviate the homeless problem? No. You don't get a, a pat on the back for uh, hiring veterans at starvation wages. And he also had to say, oh, and we're one of the largest federal income taxpayers, recently contributing nearly 2% of all corporate taxes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jen, are you in the super chat? Can we throw a parade for Walmart that they pay taxes? Oh my Lord, let's throw a parade for Walmart and the Waltons. They pay 2% of corporate taxes. I wanna show you Bernie uh, after the shareholders meeting. Uh, he rallied the crowd as well. One might think that a family worth $175 billion would be able to pay its employees a living wage. Yeah! And yet, as you all know, the starting wage at Walmart now 
is $11 an hour. And people cannot make it on $11 an hour. You can't pay rent. You can't get health care. You can't feed your kids or put gas in the car on $11 an hour. Just want dignity. And what we are also saying, it is a little bit absurd that many, many Walmart employees are forced to go on government programs like Medicaid or food stamps or public housing subsidized by the taxpayers of this country. So all we are saying to the Walton family and Walmart, pay your workers a living wage. Living wage is fifteen dollars an hour. Now this is not a radical idea. We've made progress in the last year. We've worked with Amazon employees. They have raised their minimum wage to fifteen bucks an hour. We've worked with Disney employees. They've raised their minimum wage to fifteen bucks an hour. Target is moving to 15 bucks an hour. Yes. This company owned by the wealthiest family in America can pay 15 bucks an hour. Yes. Today we are here to fight for the dignity of Walmart employees. To make sure that every employee at Walmart has at least a living wage. So I just want to thank all of you for standing together. So I have a few uh, thoughts on this. Number one, is anybody else in awe? I mean, I'm not trying to be a Bernie bro here, but it's kind of laughable to me how anyone said, oh, he's too old. This man has campaigned more than any other candidate, the only other candidate that he's even been remotely close to covering as much ground as Bernie Sanders is Elizabeth Warren. She has been out and about all over the country. Number one, anyone who says, oh, he's too old, I would be literally passed out if I was going at the pace of Bernie Sanders. I'm 32, he's 77. So, BS. Number two, it's, uh, I got, you know, listen, I'm not gonna criti crit criticize him, but it's also hard to live on $15 an hour, let's be honest. $15 an hour is not some magic Trojan horse when you have prices going up on everything over the last 10 to 20 years. So, but it's, it's a start. Once we get to $15, then we start going towards 20, 25, 30. But I digress. The third thing is, how are you going to beat Donald Trump and his insanity and his fraudulent populism without actual populism? How are you going to do that? What you just saw, Bernie Sanders out there fighting with Walmart, fighting alongside Walmart workers. What Bernie Sanders, he just said he's going to be uh, strike uh, fighting with, uh, with, at an event with McDonald's workers this weekend. He has fought for, for Verizon workers. He has fought for Amazon's workers. He has fought for Disney's workers and probably several more of it I'm forgetting. This is how you win. But the problem is, why is it, why is it that Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Beto O'Rourke, Julian Castro, uh, Pete, you know, America's favorite mayor, Pete, and all these Johnny-come-lately progressives who are not progressive, why is it that they won't go to shareholder meetings like that? Why is it that they won't pick it with McDonald's workers or Verizon workers, this and that? Because probably some of their donors are on Walmart's board. Hillary Clinton was on Walmart's board in the 1980s. Do Democratic Party donors are either shareholders in Walmart or in that filthy, rotten oligarchy that they don't want their money touched. Why is it that CNN won't cover it? Because CNN's owned by AT&T. AT&T don't want to see minimum wage going up, going up all across the country. Bernie Sanders also, and this is what Walmart really hates. I think they would rather give $15 an hour. 
Bernie's also talking about, we need workers on your board, because that's where the power is, board of directors. Yeah, Bernie's even fighting for BuzzFeed's workers. When does this man sleep? He just tweeted out the other day attacking BuzzFeed, who won't, uh, you know, has, you know, talks a good talk, but basically won't give their union anything. You know, at, at the bottom line is, is Bernie Sanders going to convince the Waltons to do the right thing? I doubt it. I don't think the Waltons care enough. I don't think they want to give an inch. I think they're greedy, awful, evil people. But it's about something bigger than whether he could get it done with Walmart. At the end of the day, you know, the media pushing this nonsense. And by the way, Joe Biden has lost seven points in most polls since his bump. I told you at the time, besides the polling all being BS, besides the polls all oversampling voters over 50, no offense to those over 50, uh, it would, you know, his his uh, lead would shrink. But what's really amazing is, you know, the corporate media wants to pretend that this anti-establishment fervor that took over the country in 2016, oh, that's gone. People now, they just want, you know, normalcy. They want a normal leader who could, you know, make America normal again, as Joe Biden says. No, they don't. That anti-establishment fever that was behind uh, Bernie Sanders and behind Donald Trump, even though he was lying, is still there. It's thicker. It's more. It's uh, at a higher intensity than it was in 2016. And you're going to stick Joe Biden up against Donald Trump, corporate Comcast Joe Biden, and you expect him to inspire people in the Midwest, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. But there's something else that I think Bernie is doing here. I think he's doing it just because this is who Bernie is and he's fighting for those workers. But paycheck to paycheck, low income workers that work at Walmart and Burger King, a lot of them are minorities. A lot of them are minorities. Of course, there's poor white people too. There's a lot of minorities working at these fast food chains, Walmart, Target. They're going to know which presidential candidate has been fighting for them, which one has showed up, and it's not Joe Biden. I think that's going to make a big, big difference when, you, when you're talking primary time. Because, uh, yes, black voters will, in some quarters, gravitate to Joe Biden because of Obama and the Obama connection. But show me what you've done for me lately. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.